My name is Alyssa Woodard, and I'm a graduate student at NC State University. I am in the horticulture department, and I am working on my master's. My projects all focus on organic sweet potato management. So today we are here at the Cherry Research Station out in Goldsboro, North Carolina, where I have one of my projects for my thesis. This project is looking at using leguminous cover crops in an organic sweet potato management practice to look at the nitrogen contributions that we could potentially get from those crops and the timing of when that nitrogen is released. I'm David Suchoff. I'm Alternative Crops and Organic Production Systems Extension Specialist and Assistant Professor in the Department of Crop and Soil Sciences at NC State. We're trying to ask a number of questions with this research. First, we want to determine which cover crop or leguminous cover crop uh, is a good fit or the best fit for uh, organic sweet potato growers. That is, which is going to provide uh, the most um, nitrogen for the crop and um, have that nitrogen available for the crop when it needs it. Uh, and so we're going to determine which species are best. We're also going to uh, look into when that cover crop should be terminated. When we terminate a leguminous cover crop, it starts releasing its nitrogen. And one of the biggest challenges for organic farmers is to synchronize the release of that organic nitrogen from the cover crop with the nitrogen demand of their cash crop. And so here we're looking at sweet potatoes. This research is being conducted here at CEFs um, for a number of reasons. One, sweet potatoes grow very well in this part of the state. And two, and most importantly, um, this is organic certified land. And we have very few research stations here um, in North Carolina that also have organic certified land. Uh, so we're really able to better understand the system truly in, um, in an organic framework. For this project, I had three different cover crops um, in our system. So we were looking at crimson clover, hairy vetch, and winter pea. And these cover crops were then terminated at three different times prior to transplant. So we went in in late April, mid-May, and late May. So that all corresponded to about seven weeks, five weeks, and three weeks before we came in to plant our sweet potatoes. For this project, we're looking at legumes because legumes are able to contribute a higher percentage of nitrogen as a potential nitrogen fertilizer for our cover crops. And we chose three different species. Crimson clover is a common cover crop already used down here in the south, but it typically will mature a little bit earlier in the season than some other options. So crimson clover by the end of April was already setting mature seed. And that's, again, a couple weeks prior to when we're even considering coming in to plant our sweet potatoes. So the winter pea and hairy vetch, they mature a little bit later in the season. So we want to see if maybe those could be a better option um, compared to the crimson clover. In addition to having our cover crop treatments, I also had some controls which over the winter, instead of having cover crops, they were just left fallow, so just weeds. And then after we plant it, we used three different rates of nitrogen in those control treatments. So we had some plots that had no nitrogen, so we'll be able to see, okay, if a sweet potato um, plant was not giving any nitrogen, what would be our yields? And then we also had a half rate, which is about 40 pounds per acre, and our full rate, approximately 80 pounds per acre to see how our nitrogen rates might um, influence our sweet potato yields. Throughout the entire growing season, we've been taking soil samples to be able to get a measurement of what is the nitrogen in the soil at that specific time. So approximately every two weeks since um, we terminated our cover crops up until harvest, we've been coming in and getting those soil samples in addition, I've also been taking leaf tissue samples at a few times throughout the season. And that'll be able to get us an idea of what is the nitrogen content in the leaf sample. Back when we terminated our cover crop biomass, I came in and took a quadrat to get a little sample of what our tissue biomass was for our crimson clover, our hairy vetch, our, our winter pea. Was able to take that, dry that, 
grind that up and send that off for analysis to be able to get the carbon and nitrogen content in the cover crop. First, we looked at, okay, what was our biomass of our different cover crops at our different termination times? And we found no significant difference of cover crop or termination time. So all of my cover crops could have uh, had the same, statistically the same biomass. We also then looked at the carbon and nitrogen percentages in the cover crops. And for percent carbon, we saw a linear effect with time. So when we terminated in May rather than April, we had a lower percent carbon in those later terminated cover crops. We also looked at that percent nitrogen. And similarly, we saw that percent nitrogen decreased when we delayed termination until the end of May. With percent nitrogen, we also did see a difference, though, between our different cover crops. So a hairy vetch had a higher percentage than our crimson clover or our winter pea. When we take that percent nitrogen and we scale that up onto our per acre basis to see, okay, what could each plot potentially contribute, we actually lost that significance and all of our cover crops at all our different termination times had the ability to contribute 60 pounds of nitrogen per, um, per acre. I'm interested to see with all of our different soil samples and our plant material samples to see if maybe we do see some differences between our different cover crops and our different termination times. Even though they all have the potential to contribute 60 pounds of nitrogen per acre, depending on these ratios, we might see a different type of breakdown or maybe we might have a difference in timing of when that nitrogen is available to the sweet potatoes. So I'm really excited to get the rest of the data of this project to analyze that and also to look at it look at our yields because that's that's what matters most to the farmer um, that if we want to see we want to see those differences in our yield <laughs>